Thanks. Uh, for those of you that don't know me already, I'm Aaron. <coughs> um, when I'm not building JavaScript and Ruby apps, I'm a father to this little fella. Everyone that sees my talks gets, a, gets an update. That's Noah. He's pretty cool. He's got a little... Huh? Uh, 18 months. He's got a little brother or sister coming in two months. So uh, I think he's about to get a whole lot more hectic, I think. Um, so I just wanted to give you guys a bit of an update on Embassy Light Deploy <coughs> and where it's at. So I, I talked about this, I don't know how long ago now, over a year, I'd say, um, in the early days. But since then, a lot's, a lot's happened. So I just wanted to sort of tell you where it's at and what's going on. Um, firstly, I guess, is anyone, does anyone not know what Embassy Light Deploy is? Not heard of it? One person. Oh, that's two people. That's cool. That's good. Is anyone here using it in production? Three people. Cool. Cool. Hopefully there'll be more <coughs> in a few months. Uh, so first, I guess a little bit of history then uh, about what it is. Uh, back in 2014, um, I kind of struggled to find a real definitive way to deploy MBRAPs. I was pretty used to being able to sort of git push on a Rails app and then Heroku would um, would, would build everything and, and spin it all up, but in my head I just didn't really have a nice definitive way on how to, how to deploy an Ember app. And I did quite a bit of looking around and I'd sort of see all these different ways. It seemed to me a lot, a lot of people were basically deploying stuff to production from their, from their desktop, uh, syncing stuff, um, just manually copying to S3, which didn't sort of feel right to me. Um, I kind of wanted some sort of way to just type something in the command line and, and have it deploy. And so last year, um, I don't know if anyone knows Luke Melia, so most of you do, um, he did a talk at RailsConf and it was titled Lightning Fast Deployment of your Rails Back JavaScript Apps. And he just sort of described how his company, Yap Labs, deploy things. Um, they have a, a, an Ember um, app backed by Rails. And for those that haven't seen this or don't understand that concept, um, essentially what they do is they build their static files, they push the index HTML to Redis, um, and they have a server that pulls that out of Redis and serves it. And they push their assets to S3. And so obviously the index HTML file points to the S3 assets and boom, away you go. So that gives them a lot of power uh, to be able to deploy <coughs> super quick because just copying a couple of files um, along with other cool things like being able to sort of activate different versions, show different versions um, in production by just adding query parameters to the URL. So this is just their strategy. But I saw this and it's like, actually, that makes a lot of sense to me. I think we can sort of um, automate that in a pretty nice way. And so this was called lightning fast deployment. So this has kind of been coined in a way or, or referred to as the lightning approach sort of since then. Um, so I sort of just mucked around. I had a few different iterations with grunt tasks and stuff, but it ended up on, a, on an add-on for Ember CLI, uh, CLI called Ember CLI Deploy. It had two sort of command lines where you could deploy the index to Redis, deploy the assets to S3. Um, so enter 2015, and a few other people had done similar things. Uh, there was quite a few open source implementations of, of deployment stuff, of this lightning approach, um, and that was really cool. So we're all basically trying to suss out the, the idea, kind of shore up some, some conventions and understand what people want to do. Um, out, of, out of those, these are the ones that were a kind of Ember CLI based. So we've got Ember CLI Deploy, Front End Builds, Ember Deploy, and a couple others here, the Heroku Build Pack. Some, most people probably use that. Um, if you look at, if you whittle it down a bit more, these guys, these three kind of embrace that lightning strategy of deploying to, to Redis and S3. Um, so then I started to look a bit deeper into this and all of a sudden you can sort of see the Ember CLI deploy and another one called Ember deploy, which is also an Ember CLI add-on um, by a guy called Michael Klein. They basically did exactly the same thing. They were using the same idea of a core, core add-on plus the ability to add uh, plugins for different, different uh, deployment methods. Um, this front end builds was essentially the same thing again, except it had a bit of a, a Rails front end so you could see visually on your screen your different deployments and activate different ones. And that was actually a fork from Ember CLI Deploy. So you kind of see where we're going here. We, we had a few of us all trying to do a similar thing uh, in different projects. Ember CLI Deploy had kind of the best name based on the conventions on, on how, we, how we name add-ons at the moment. So, and 
Ember Deploy had the biggest ecosystem out of these things. It had a bunch of different adapters. So while you could deploy your index to Redis, there was, someone wrote an adapter to deploy it to S3 instead. Um, so what happened was at the start of 2015, Luke Melia got in contact with us, uh, the maintainers of these three projects, and kind of said, I'm going to do a talk at EmberConf. Uh, it's called The Art of Ember Deployment. And I want to talk about kind of coming together as one and having the official deployment tool called Ember CLI Deploy. What do you think? So we basically, uh, within the space of 24 hours, jumped onto a Hangout um, international call across the world. I think Mike was in Austria somewhere. These guys are in the States and I was in London. And we basically agreed that we'd, we'd, we'd come together and we decided to merge things into Ember CLI Deploy. So essentially we have one team, one project, and now one command to deploy them all. This is where a hobbit jumps out, but my keynote skills aren't that good. Um, so we now have uh, Ember CLI deploy add-on, which is underneath the Ember CLI um, organization in GitHub. And that's kind of the, I guess, official way to deploy apps. So currently we're on 1.4.x, which is what most people that have used it know of Ember CLI deploy. And it is heavily, heavily focused on that whole lightning approach, which is put your index in Redis, put your assets in S3. But as a lot of people sort of told, told us over the time, that's not necessarily how everyone likes to deploy. It doesn't work for them. They don't want to do it that way, or they, they have other ways they prefer, or other ways they've already, they're already doing. Uh, so it was a little bit inflexible in that respect. But it was cool because it, it kind of it did its job. It, it proved out some concepts, proved out some good workflows. I know I've chatted to Brian a lot about his uh, crazy deployment setup, and it definitely doesn't fit for that. So where 0.4.x was sort of very heavily focused on Redis and Amazon, we started to, to see that we've got all these other options here. People deployed a div shot to Azure, Firebase, GitHub Pages, Fastly, and uh, Brian's crazy setup that I mentioned. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> so um, which I, I'd love to talk to you about now, Brian, yeah, after this at the bar, yeah. Um, so this kind of brings us to 0.5.0, which is what I really wanted to talk to you about. So we've, we've re-architected it um, pretty much completely <laughs> and with the view of being able to just deploy to anything you want. So any deployment setup scenario you have, you should easily be able to, to use that uh, with the hope that Ember deploy is going to be much easier than any script you've already written, and it's kind of a no-brainer. That's the that's the that's the uh, idea. So what's a 0.5.0? So basically, it's a deployment pipeline. So before, it was literally just a command that would uh, do some stuff, like build your project, do some stuff to push your index to Redis, do some stuff to push your assets to S3. But we've we've brought in a pipeline which is kind of a little bit like Backburner. If anyone knows the Backburner um, micro library, which kind of backs the Ember run loop. Um, we've got a new plugin architecture, so it's really easy to, to create your own plugins if they don't already exist to allow you to do things. Um, and I'll go through what that means. And we're working a lot on documentation for this to make it easy for people using it and easy for plugin authors. So as a refresher, um, we'll use the example of the lightning approach to understand how the deployment pipeline works. Um, and in future talks, it'd be really good to take other examples how you guys deploy stuff and uh, show how you might do it. But for now, we'll just take that lightning approach because hopefully we kind of understand the gist of it. So essentially, we have our Redis and Amazon services. We have our CI server or our dev machine, and we build our files, uh, which essentially produce two <coughs> or a number of static assets, one being the index HTML, one being JavaScript, CSS, images, all that sort of stuff. Um, and in this scenario, we, we push them up to our respective services. So the 0.5.0 pipeline basically looks like this. It's, it's got a number of hooks that are executed in sequential order, starting from configure to activate. Um, there's actually a few more, but this is kind of a, a general high level idea. So using 0.5.0 is as easy as just installing the plugins that you want to use. So they're just dependencies. They're, they're, each plugin is an Ember CLI add-on. Uh, so you can see there we've, we've got Ember CLI deploy installed plus Ember CLI to deploy build Redis and S3. So they're all just plugins, um, Ember CLI add-ons. Um, and then in your config, 
you pop a deploy.js file, which literally just um, shows the config, specifies the config feature, those plugins. Namespace by the uh, plugin name. So you can see build, Redis has the host and port, S3 has the access key ID. That's pretty much all you need to get going. Um, <coughs> run Ember deploy production, and essentially what happens is Ember CLI loads up all its add-ons. Ember CLI deploy inspects those add-ons and finds out which ones are plugins, and then goes ahead and registers the the hooks that they've implemented. So Ember CLI deploy build has implemented the configure and the build hook, so it's registered those against those hooks there. Next up, Ember CLI deploy Redis has implemented the configure, upload, and activate hook, so therefore it registers those guys. And finally, Ember CLI deploy S3 implements the configure hook and the upload hook. Um, so these guys are all configured, and then it goes along and basically just executes the pipeline, starting at the top, all the way, all the way through the configure um, pipe into the build, and so on and so forth. So essentially, what happens is uh, we go through them all, and you'll see this green, green circle uh, being passed to each of the the plugin hooks, and it's getting bigger. So this, this represents what we're calling like the deployment context, which is essentially a JavaScript object that's passed to each of the hooks as they're executed. So what this allows is plugins to add stuff to the context to allow other plugins <coughs> further on in the, in the pipeline to, to uh, access that data. So an example of that, for instance, is the, the build plugin puts a list of all the, the built files so that plugins down here can, can see what files have been built. Um, there's all sorts of things. I know like Brian configures root 53 something or others. He might have a plugin that, that does that. And then there's some, some dynamic name that was created from that. He can pop that onto the context. That's then passed along and any other plugins running after it can access it. So that's what this uh, green, green dot basically represents. So the pipeline just goes through and executes each one of these hooks <coughs> until we get to the end. And your, your thing is deployed. So this is a list of... Uh, all the, all the hooks that you can hook into. Um, it looks a bit unwieldy, but they do make a lot of sense. And for the people that are really familiar with Ember, the conventions are pretty similar. You've got your will do something, do something, and then you did do something kind of hooks. So um, the first one is configure this. This is where you can, uh, so just make sure that all the configuration that your plugin needs is present. Um, and so that any of the hooks running for that plugin afterwards have everything they need to run. Uh, setup hook kind of just runs at the start of everything. Uh, you might open an SSH tunnel. I know someone's written a plugin to do that. So this is a good place to do that. Um, <coughs> after that, we have a will deploy hook. Do anything you really like there. You can maybe notify Slack to say I'm about to deploy. Uh, there is a plugin to, to send stuff to Slack channels. Next, you have your, your build hook. So they, 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 li they literally run in this order. It goes configure, setup, will deploy, and then it will run the will build hook for each of the plugins the build hook for each of the plugins and the did build hook. So you can sort of confirm your environment here. You can build, we'll build the project files, and then you can kind of confirm that your build is all, all fine and ready to go in the will build hook. Then we give you prepare hooks, um, and they'll run in that order as well. We'll prepare, prepare, and did prepare. Um, we use this one for kind of preparing some data about the deploy. So um, the if you want to generate a unique root revision key for this particular deployment, or maybe grab the committer and the timestamp and the commit message and all that sort of stuff, this is where you can prepare some metadata about the deploy. These are all just hooks you can, you can hook into at your own, own leisure. You can do whatever you like in them, but these are just examples of some things you can do with them. The upload hooks are sort of intended for the actual pushing of some files somewhere. So you notice it's not specific to assets and index anymore, which is what the Lightning approach was. It was all about push your index to Redis, assets to S3. But now it's just like upload something. So you can have two or three different plugins that all upload different files to different services. They just got to implement the right hooks. Yeah. So if I've got some a plugin that uploads to S3, yep. who makes the decision of which files get uploaded? Is it the plugin maker? You do. Or is that passed in through your config? You do, saying yeah, saying config. Yep, so you do. So I'll, I'll cover that in, the, in a little bit. You, the developer consuming Ember CLI deploy. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'll go into that in just a sec. Um, finally, we have a concept of activating. So this is kind of, in a way, specific to this Lightning uh, method where you could push uh, an index file to Redis but not actually activate it. So 
it's not really live yet, but then you can run a command later to, to actually activate it and make it live. Uh, so this is this is just some hooks to be able to do that sort of thing. If you don't want to, if you want to kind of push it into the production environment, maybe access it via putting a, a, a query parameter on the end of the URL. Um, but then you want to activate it at some later stage uh, to do basically a zero downtime uh, deploy. You can do that. Uh, then we have a did deploy and a teardown hook where you can um, again notify Slack that you've deployed something, things like that. So that's it's a big list, but uh, these are all the sort of things that you can hook into along the way. You can do one or many of them. You don't you don't need to do them all. That's for sure. So a bit about what a plugin looks like. Um, it is just an Ember CLI add-on. So Ember add-on name of plugin. <coughs> it's basically got three. It needs three things. It needs to be an add-on. It needs to contain the Ember CLI deploy plugin keyword. So Ember CLI deploy, when it runs, it, it looks at all the add-ons that have been um, loaded by Ember CLI and looks for that keyword there and identifies that as a plugin. Has anyone created add-ons? Are you familiar with the, the layout of an add-on? Some people. Essentially, it's just, um, it looks similar to a, a, pr a project layout, but the main thing is it's got an index.js file. That's kind of the, the hook in. Um, so the only other requisite for a plugin is that it implements a create deploy plugin function. Um, and this needs to return an object, which is essentially the hooks that you want to implement. So you can see um, this plugin here implements the configure hook and the upload hook. It's pretty easy. So you can add one or, or many hooks that you want to implement there. So the idea is you run Ember deploy production. Ember CLI deploy goes through all the add-ons, finds the one that has the, the plugin keyword, has that list. And for each one of those guys, it executes this create deploy plugin, takes the, the result, and then registers each of the, the hooks that you've implemented <coughs> into the pipeline, and then executes the pipeline. The hook's in order. Boom. <coughs> it's pretty basic, really. But it gives a lot of flexibility. Um, so we touched on the deployment context a little bit. So this is literally just a JavaScript object. So you can see when you implement a plugin, uh, sorry, a hook, uh, it receives one argument, which is this context object. So any hook can, can dive into this object and look at any data that's been added to it by any hook that's run previously. And then anything that's returned by a hook will be merged into the context. So you can see the context is empty at this point. It gets passed into the build, and the build returns an object with a disturb property, and that's merged into the context. So that'll then be passed through to every other hook that's run afterwards. So this is really cool. It allows plugins to kind of talk to each other, send some data along, and um, yeah. Configuration's pretty pretty easy. Basically, you just need a, a file called deploy.js in your config right next to your environment JS. Looks exactly the same. Returns a function. Um, Actually, that's the environment, not options, just like your environment JS. Uh, and this just needs to return an object that has um, properties that are basically namespaced for the, for the plugins you're going to use. So Ember CLI deploy S3 is installed, so we have an S3 property there with all the config for S3. Redis, you'd have a Redis property, so on and so forth. It's pretty, pretty easy. Am I making? Yep, so it's exactly the same as your uh, environment JS. So this is actually, as I said, the environment thing. So you can say if environment equals dev, then, then S3 cred credentials are this, or you can use um, like environment variables. So it, it loads them out of the box. Um, you can actually have a .env file uh, for each environment in there, and it will load them up by default as well. So there's a few different, a few different ways you can do it. Am I making sense so far? Going too quick, too slow? Um, so what you can do, so that's the basic use case, and this we're going to start looking at a few things that maybe more power users would, would do. So essentially, Ember CLI Deploy will run the plugins in alphabetical order, which is the way Ember CLI loads them from the node modules uh, package. But if you want to, to change that order, override it, you can add a plugins array just at the top there, which then specifies what order you want to run them in. So that will specify the order, but it will also specify which plugins are run. So you might have four other plugins installed, but they won't be run. Only S3 and Redis will be run at that point. So that's sort of just a little bit, uh, a way you can kind of customize it a bit more and override the order that they run. You can also alias plugins. So this is 
So in answer to your question, Brian, like you would you would specify um, in the different plugin what what files. So like say the S3 plugin, for instance, has a, a file pattern property, so you can specify what files you want to do. This here allows you to to create multiple instances of the same plugin. So we want to create two instances of the S3 plugin. We're aliasing it as foo assets and bar assets. So you might have um, JS files you want to send to this bucket and then CSS files you want to send to this bucket. So we're going to use the S3 <coughs> plugin, which pushes stuff to S3, but we're going to have configuration for the foo assets alias, where the bucket is this one, and then the configuration for the bar assets um, instance, which is going to push it to this one. So it allows you to, to be more flexible and, and do exactly as you asked there. And the config doesn't actually just need to be static um, data. We actually, you can pass a function into any of the configuration properties and it will be uh, executed at runtime and pass the current deployment context. So for instance, if, if I have a plugin that runs that does set up Brian's Route 53, whatever, or CloudFront distribution and there's a particular name that it's being given, I can pop that onto the context and then a plugin later can run a function, it can set a function for the config thing that'll have that context passed into it. So at runtime, whenever the, the hook is actually run for that, for that plugin, it can access that, that property of the context. So that that's makes it a lot more flexible and gives you a lot of power to be able to do things dynamically at runtime. So currently these are the list, oh, I made that a bit too light, but anyway. Um, this is the current list of plugins that we've built for 0.5.0. .0. They, they actually exist, we're using these in, in production. A bunch of us already are, so it's good to go and love to get your feedback if you're, if you're into this sort of thing. Um, I won't go through them all, but I guess we've got one to build things, um, got one to deploy to Redis S3, uh, one to build a manifest so that we, you don't need to push everything to S3, it'll actually check a manifest and only push the stuff that doesn't exist already. Um, Gzipping, um, so you can see the, the plugins are really designed to be made to do one thing really well and only one thing, so you can make them quite small and then you can just plug and play. So I only installed the gzip one today because I hadn't gotten around to it, we needed to gzip and I literally just did, a, did an Ember install, Ember CLI to deploy gzip and all of a sudden my deploy process was gzipping everything and pushing it up to S3. It was pretty cool actually. Um, John had to merge the PR and he was pretty surprised at how easy it was. It <laughs> and it worked as well. Um, so I guess these ones, are, this one's kind of cool. Um, I actually use this in production at the moment. We, we had, um, we're using the lightning approach, except instead of press, um, pushing index HTML to, to Redis, we're, we want to be a bit more dynamic about that. And we, we're pushing the, all the interesting stuff that's in index HTML as a JSON blob, so that then our Rails server pulls that down and can merge that into an ERB template instead of the HTML already being defined by the Ember app. So um, that's pretty handy, it gives you more more um, space there to kind of template yourself. All you've got <coughs> is just the information and where the assets are, the configuration, all that sort of stuff. So these things are all available to use. And documentation um, is here at the moment. We haven't got a domain yet, but we're, we're kind of giving that a good crack. Um, and that'll, that'll sort of really start to build up once we've done the, the next few features. So you can try it out today. It's, um, it's just in beta at the moment. You need to chuck the version on the end. Um, but you can, you can install it uh, with 0.5.0-beta.1. Um, love you to try it out and pull requests are always welcome. Contributions are always welcome. Advice, bugs, all that sort of stuff. Any suggestions? Um, and if you've got anything you want to talk about in regards to this or anything else, um, I'm going to be at the bar tonight. So love to chat about it. It'd be awesome. Does anyone have any questions? Alex. No, used, we, we write our own, um, so yeah, basically. <laughs> um, I think, I, I don't know if it will really fit fully, but we have written it so that the pipeline itself is not Ember CLI deploy specific. The idea is that we will pull it out into micro library. If we can use Backburner, that'd be even better, but I don't know if it's a good, if it's r the right fit, but yeah. It's, um, we, are, we have written it so that we can pull it out, which we'll do at some stage in the future. Brian? Yeah, so that's 
Yeah, sure. Yeah, I mean, that's just another command. Um, we've got all the ability to do it. It's really easy. It's just we've not done it. We're just really trying to do um, basically parity with 0.4.0 .0 for starters. And that's going to come. That's definitely on my list of things I really so want to do. Any so. <coughs> yeah. Yep, yep. So basically anything that's returned from a plugin um, is promisified. So if that rejects, then we can we can easily hook into that and roll stuff back. So um, yeah, we can definitely we're definitely planning on doing that and just having like an Ember deploy rollback Excellent. revision number or just rollback how many steps or how many revisions or whatever. So it's all in the pipeline, it's just we haven't done it yet. <coughs> yeah, it's coming. So that's a whole other chat, I guess. Okay. Like, be really like, it's a really interesting presentation that Luke did. But um, I guess one, of, a couple of good <coughs> things it gives you, it, it, it allows you to push multiple versions up, um, and you can basically add, a, if you want, you can add a query parameter to, to to the URL and just show a particular version. So you can actually deploy stuff to production, and test it and run it without it being the live version, which is which is really powerful. So. A/B testing, sending stuff to like stakeholders so they can look at beforehand, and you're actually deployed to production, but it's not the live version. Um, and you know, it's 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 quick. It's it's pushing something to to a low latency data store, and it's pushing a couple of things to, to Redis. You think like what they were doing before, and what a lot of us probably were doing. Maybe had everything bundled in Rails. You make a CSS change. You got to push it up to Heroku. It builds for five minutes and then does whatever it needs to do. So um, those are just a couple of the benefits they sort of got from them, I guess. Um, yeah. Is there anything in the pipeline for the Microsoft Store, like checkpoint online, pager? For the what, sorry? Because if, if there is any chance to see a development on Azure and checkpoint online on the Microsoft Store? Uh, yeah, we, it's, there's, there's, nothing, there's an Azure plugin that someone's writing, okay. I think. Um, but as for the other stuff, not yet. But feel free to, to build them. It's it's super easy to build a plugin now. So we're we're currently building stuff that, that we need so that we can actually test it and that other people kind of need. And we've got our own Slack channel that a lot of people are contributing to, and a lot of people are actually writing their own plugins. So there's not anything specifically for those things you mentioned, okay. but um, by all means, send like create your own. That's the whole point of it. So yeah. And if you got any questions about it, like we're more than happy to help on how to do that. So um, on the, I don't know if you're on the London, uh, sorry, the Ember community Slack channel, but there's a, an Ember CLI deploy channel in that. Um, and we're on that all the time. So if you've got any questions about how to do it, how to start, whatever, <coughs> just, just ping something in there and we'll, we're more than happy to give you a hand. Okay, thanks. That's right. Ken. Uh, just wondering, in, in terms of you know, being a user of the, the 5.0 or 5.0 product, yep. um, how much are you being a user versus a tester? How, how stable is it right now? So we're using it in production every day. Uh, we have been for uh, probably three or four months. Um, and so uh, a bunch of the other guys on the, on the team. And so are a few other people that aren't even on the team. So it's currently been, like we're deploying to production. We can deploy multiple times a day. Yeah, and we haven't had any problems. Like it, I, I, was, I was building, yeah, building this at the same time we wanted to use it and stuff. So it have been sort of, you know, when it broke or didn't work for, for us, then I needed to fix it because we couldn't get to production. So you'll so. go through beta cycle pretty quickly, you think? Or What's that? Uh, yeah, so we, we, we're we really close to getting really close to getting past beta, yeah. putting into um, like 0.5.0. .0. Just one of one or two other things we want to do. Um, but it's just about ready to go. Yeah, so it's pretty close. Can I go? Well, question about environments. When you want to deploy to an environment, it's different than your environment production, that the environment you use to build Ember. So you, can, you may want to build Ember in production mode, but deploy to yep. QA. Yep. So to do differentiate between Ember environment and yep. your deployment environment. Yeah, so so the concept of the the, env the environment you want to deploy to is known as a, a deploy target. Um, and then the environment, what you refer to as environment, is the same as what you would with Ember CLI deploy. So you might want to build in production mode and deploy it to staging. So um, that's, that's just passed in the command line, em Ember deploy production, Ember deploy staging. So that staging and production is the deploy target. And could you specify I want to deploy to production Ember? In your configuration. In mode, so without minification and everything. In your configuration. In the yeah. Okay. Yep. So you would say if environment equals 
staging, then you'll, yeah, like you put it in for the plugin, you say what the environment is that you want to build with. In the, cause like the build, the build plugin has its own configuration. So you tell it what environment you want to build with. Anyone else? Jamie? Yeah, um, asynchronously in the hooks, do you return promise or? How yeah, so you can, you don't have to, but it will be promiseified anyway. So <laughs> if you return an object, we will wrap it in a promise. So it's all, yeah, it's all done with promises. And then are there, it sounds like everything's run sequentially, are bits of it parallelized, can you make them so? No, they're sort of, they're done. It, it is a pipeline, it's like a conveyor belt, basically chuck them all on and then they just pop off the end. Um, so you haven't really thought about asynchronously. I don't know how that would work because a lot of the time this needs to happen before this. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, we haven't sort of really even entertained that idea. So the feature I miss, how to, how to, up, how to activate, push, I mean deploy and activate. In yep, so that's all in there. It's in, it's, uh, it's in your command, uh, in your config. <coughs> I think it auto activates by default. <coughs> Can't remember, but there's, yeah, you can, and you can also overwrite as well, um, which is always a problem because on 1.4 we were using the commit hash yep. as the unique key. Um, and if you hadn't committed to Git, then the commit hash was the same and it would crap out because you've already deployed that version, but you can easily overwrite now as well. Um, it doesn't actually use the commit hash anymore, but yeah, that's another thing. That's all. So yep. the, uh, the library itself doesn't come with any opinions built in now. Called nope. Kind of nope. It. Yep. So if you wanted the lightning methodology, <laughs> you would, how many add-ons would you have to install to assemble it? Well, it depends what you want to do. Um, so we have probably, so we've got the build, S3, Redis, Gzip, Manifest, a bunch of them. But we've also got, I forgot to mention, we've got the concept of um, uh, packs, so plugin packs. So you basically just need to do one. You do Ember install, uh, I think it's called Light, the Lightning Pack or something, and it installs all the add-ons that you need. So the idea is we'll create these plugin packs when we when we sort of see different deploy scenarios, like in, remember install Brian Crotez's crazy deployment approach. <laughs> Boom, done. So that's there is that one for the Lightning approach right there for you. So it's all ready to go. So that's the idea. Not so much the crazy. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, if that's it then if no one's got any more questions. All right, thank cool. you.